Welcome to the Linescale 3 onboard log demo. This episode is all about the Linescale's unique onboard logging capabilities. So I'll be covering only the icons, settings, and menu items that are directly correlated with onboard logging. The first icon displays how much memory is currently in use by onboard logs. Each log will take up 1% of memory space. The next icon indicates what the line scale will do once memory is full. Overwrite old logs or stop logging. The next icon designates if onboard logging is currently enabled or disabled. And this icon shows if onboard logging is currently paused, waiting for a trigger or recording. Energy save. OLED displays draw power for every displayed pixel. Therefore, to extend battery life, the screen is blanked after no button is pressed for a preset amount of time. Simply press any button to wake it up. It will continue logging, of course, while the display is off. Back to the icons. Pause or record right here. The current scan rate at which the logs are recorded can be changed by the press of a button and the current load unit, uh, which is the same for display and logs. This is a log start trigger and a log stop trigger value. These start and stop log recording whenever logging is enabled. Right now it's off, therefore log recording is paused. Let's turn it on, see what happens. Log recording starts immediately because we had one kilonewton trigger at over two kilonewton load. So whenever this accidentally happens, you can simply disable the log. No memory wasted. The log is obsolete if you stop it manually. Higher scan rates uh, require more memory for logs. 640 hertz, 16 times more than 40 hertz and 1280 even twice that of 640. But nevertheless, uh, memory capacity is about half an hour of onboard logs at the highest scan rate. It's about 50 hours at 10 hertz and about 12 hours at 40 hertz. Let's have a look at the log menu. After downloading the onboard logs to your flash drive, you can delete them here and free up memory. This one's the same as pressing the log button. None of them has priority over the other. Here's the setting uh, which changes the icon with a circular arrow I showed you before. With override oldest off, um, log recording will simply stop once memory is full. Here's the start trigger when onboard logging is enabled and the load reaches this level, the onboard logs will start to record. The end trigger will stop log recording once the load drops below the value that is defined here. When set to zero, the end trigger is disabled and will never stop recording in any scenario. The second way to stop a log recording is to define a maximum length that it should have. After the specified amount of seconds have been recorded, the log is stopped and saved to memory. A new recording will immediately be started as long as the load still exceeds the start trigger. The pre-capture recording time is one of the significant features of uh, onboard logging. As soon as logging is enabled, the line scale 3 will immediately start to record a log in the pre-capture buffer. The line scale will add the specified amount of seconds from this buffer to the start of the actual log. This way you can set your start trigger value very close to the peak value that you expect from the event you want to log without missing any significant data that occurred just before the event. Pre-capture avoids tons of obsolete logs that you would otherwise have by setting low start triggers. Let's exit the menu and check our settings. 
we're still at 2.7 kn with a start trigger of 4 kn. Let's start onboard logging. Oh yeah, and here's the uh, don't overwrite old logs icon that we changed in the menu before. You can see the auto capture message and the log off icon changes to log on. But because the current load is below the start trigger value, the log is paused, uh, which means it's not recording yet. When we exceed the start trigger, log starts recording and the icon changes from a pause to a flashing recording icon. When the defined log length is reached, recording is stopped and the log is saved to memory. Logging is still enabled, but the recording is paused waiting for the next trigger event to start recording again. When the log length is reached, but the load is still above the trigger value, a new log is recorded immediately after the previous log is saved. Now let's look at a high speed logging event. 1280 hertz, maximum speed. You won't see any difference while the log is recording, but you will see the difference uh, when it's writing the log to memory. It takes a lot longer because the log buffer is now 30 times larger due to uh, many more data points. It still doesn't take up more than 1% of memory space because memory is divided into 100 so-called log segments. You can therefore save 100 logs on board until memory is full. Another event that will stop log recording besides the maximum log length is the so-called capture end trigger. Now we'll set this to a value at which we want log recording to stop even before the maximum log length is reached. Let's use a pretty tight uh, start end trigger configuration for this demo. Start at four and stop recording at three. We'll also set the max log length to a slightly higher value to demonstrate that log is not stopped by the length. And uh, the pre-capture time of three seconds is just fine for this demo. So let's give it a shot. Log recording should start at four kilonewton and stop at three kilonewton. Notice uh, the trigger value change from trigger to the time that is left for this specific log. Log is starting now and you can see the flashing recording icon and the remaining time until the log would be stopped by the specified length. But I will release the load now. And as you can see, we still had nine seconds of length remaining. Log has stopped because of the stop trigger. Okay, so let's set up an imaginary high line with a standing tension of 2.76 kilonewton. And today we want to capture whipper events only just to avoid having to evaluate billions of data points this evening if the log had just been running all day. We can expect the whipper to generate over 4 kilonewton with a standing tension of 2.75, so this value is okay. But the capture end trigger won't work for this scenario. We'll have to set it to zero, which is deactivated to avoid the lock stopping uh, during the rebound after the whipper. We don't have a post capture setting yet, but maybe it'll be a good idea to add that with the next firmware. And we'll set the max lock length to 20 seconds. That should be enough to capture the most interesting loads after the whipper. But we want to know what happened a few seconds before the whipper occurred. So we'll just set this to, let's say, 10 seconds. Um, doesn't make much sense to capture more than that before the event occurred. So this setting will give us compact and significant 30 second log files for each whipper. Okay, uh, standing tension of our highline, log is on, 
and Slackliner is mounting the line. The load is gradually increasing. It's not a very heavy Slackliner. And let's see how it's doing. Whoa, whoa, he's getting in trouble. Getting in trouble, and there's the whipper. Rebounds. Okay. He's mounting the line again. Here's the standing tension with a slack liner on it. The log has saved. Recording is paused, waiting for the next trigger event. So let's see how our slack liner is doing now. Whoa. Ah, oh, there's the next whipper. And the rebounds. Log is counting down from 20 seconds to zero when it will be saved to memory. Just about now. There we go. And the select liner has left the line. The 7% right here shows us that we have seven logs in the log memory right now. So let's take a look and download these to our USB flash drive. I'll have to remove the tension here so I can turn the line scale around and show you the two ports on the rear side. The top one called the master is designated to plug in the flash drive for downloading or uploading the logs to the drive automatically. And the second one is for connection to a computer for capturing high speed logs with the pro software and for charging. I get this under tension again to keep it from wiggling around while I plug in the USB drive. You can download the onboard logs at any time by simply plugging in a USB stick in the master port. I have a, a dual USB stick here with a standard USB-A on one side and a micro USB on the other. So let's plug it in and download our logs from today. When detecting a USB stick in the port, the line scale will automatically change to file transfer mode and upload all stored logs to the USB drive. All log files are then verified on the drive and will show a pass if saving was good and might show a fail if due to any reason the file failed to save on the drive. If you have a high quality USB drive, you should actually always see a zero here. Let's fast forward the upload of the large 1280 Hz log file. As you can see, it just doesn't make sense to always log with a full speed of 1280 Hz because the files just get massively large. Now we have uh, three more left. These are again at 40 Hz. Some of them are a bit longer though, so they might be a bit slow still, but we'll just see what happens with the last one. No, they're all okay. After the export is done, you will be notified with a message end of export and that you can safely remove the USB drive now. All you need to do is check for all past files and in the best case, zero failures. Then you can simply unplug the drive and the line scale will return to its normal operation mode. It's absolutely no problem to just plug in the drive at any time again. Existing files will simply be overwritten and you won't have any duplicates by multiple uploads. The line scale creates a folder for every date at which a uh, log exists. And in each folder, you will have uh, millisecond time stamped files for each log. So it's virtually impossible 
that you have duplicate logs which should not overwrite themselves. If it takes too long and you don't have time to wait, uh, simply unplugging your USB drive during the upload won't corrupt it. You can plug it in at a later time and restart the upload. No data will be lost if you don't delete the logs and if you don't overwrite old logs. Our upload was successful, so we can go ahead and free up some memory by deleting the onboard stored logs in the menu with a clear log memory option. You will first need to confirm that you are sure to delete all the logs. If you answer yes, your memory should show 0% usage again. Yup, there we go. Okay, and to close this video, I'd like to quickly show Bluetooth functionality in respect to logging with the existing LineScale smartphone app. The LineScale 2 app will work perfectly with the LineScale 3, but we will upgrade it to account for the LineScale 3 special functions. So let's have a look. These two devices are already paired, so connection is automatic. An active Bluetooth connection will be shown with an inverted Bluetooth icon. As you can see here, onboard logging and the app are not linked at all. Onboard log and app log have their own setup options. You can run both of them at the same time or each by themselves. The line scale three will still continue to capture the onboard logs even if Bluetooth is connected. You can have a different log set up on your app or simply use the app to monitor the load from a distance. Speaking of distance, the LineScale 3 has a high gain Bluetooth antenna behind the display. I successfully tested a 20 meter good Bluetooth connection inside our warehouse. So that's it for today. I'll have many more videos coming up in the next days. So stay tuned, stay healthy, and stay safe.